Hi everyone. So I've been wanting to do a video on more on faith. I mean, I, I keep talking about faith, but I, I have to keep coming back to it because it's, it's something that um, you can ponder for for your whole life, and the more you do, um, the better understanding you have of it. And because we live by faith, and so we, I find that um, you tend to limit how much faith works in your life and how much it's needed for your life because we tend to try and take care of things ourselves instead of exercising faith in God that he will take care of things for us. So I keep coming back to faith and how it's not just um, active in, in order to get us saved. It's something that goes beyond salvation to the rest of our lives and we never go back to works, we never go back to working uh, because that achieves nothing. That's not how God operates. He, he uh, works through faith, he does not work through, he doesn't give us things because we work, follow commandments you know, follow a list of our own do's and don'ts, whatever they are. He does everything because of faith. That was his intention, that's his design, um, and that's how the, you know, the principle of faith, the law of faith, that's, that's the overarching uh, principle that God works with, that he designed, and we need to really understand that and um, start exercising faith in everything that we can think of, not just um, the fact that we have been saved and believe that we will go to heaven or something like that. Um, that's just the start. There's so much more to faith than that. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people think we're, we're saved by faith and then we have to go back to the law, keep commandment keeping, do's and don'ts, um, working basically to put God in our debt so that he will bless us and give us stuff. Um, but that is not how he works. So let's go through verses that look at this. Romans 4, 2 to 5. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that the justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So um, in verse 4, we can see that um, grace um, is through faith. So if you're working, you're not receiving anything by grace. Um, but through faith, we know we're saved by grace through faith. Uh, that comes from God. Grace comes from God. And it's through faith. That is the only way we receive grace is through faith. Um, we cannot put God in our debt by working to receive grace. I know there's plenty of YouTube channels that will tell you the opposite, but that's not true. Um, so... Abraham believed God. God said, you will have a seed um, and you'll, you'll bless the nations and all of that. And um, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. So he was righteous, considered righteous long before he actually had a child. And um, what God didn't do was say, Okay, great, you believed me, you have faith, um, so I'm going to consider you righteous and therefore saved. Um, but now, uh, that's behind us, now we need to move on and you need to get to work um, so that we can get these promises fulfilled. So I need you to um, take Sarah, go to an IVF clinic and... Um, we need to get her on some hormones and um, get her body in reproductive mode again and um, 
you know, we need to get some eggs and sperm and and put them together in a petri dish and, and get it, get the eggs back in Sarah and uh, you know do all that stuff to try and get this baby born and make sure you've got some spare eggs in case the first one doesn't work. Um, and you know I'm I'm sure we'll get there, but I need you to do some stuff for me in order to get there. Like he didn't do that. He, the promise uh, came by grace um, through faith. It, it was God's working in supernaturally because of faith, um, fulfilling his promise that um, Abraham believed by faith. So in the same way, our lives are not supposed to be, yep, we're saved by grace through faith, and now we better get on to the so-called meat that people like to call meat of um, the commandments and, and get into work. Um, in order to get blessings from God and put God in our debt. It's not like that at all. We cannot put God in our debt. Um, as it says in, in verse 4. Um, okay, so let's look at Romans 11:33 to 36. Oh, the depth, the depth of the riches of, of both... Sorry. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God... How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counsellor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. So, in verse 35, Who has given first to God that God has to recompense him no one no one has ever been able to put God in their debt because of him and through him and to him are all things so everything we have from God comes from God including our faith he gives us faith um, so that we can exercise that faith to believe that he will give us more things, salvation and uh, everything we need in our lives. Uh, we, we can't offer him anything that would cause him to give us anything in return. We have nothing to give. Our, our own self-righteousness is filthy rags. We are, you know, under sin. We were born um, of Adam under a curse and our flesh is filthy and there is absolutely nothing we can offer God that he wants that would cause him to give us anything in return so he had to give us faith which we can could have rejected if we wanted but those of us who believed did receive it and um, we were saved by that faith that he gave us so there's absolutely nothing we can do, nothing we can give him that will cause him to be indebted to us, to give us something, to be recompensed. Because everything is of him and through him and to him. Romans 1, 16 to 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Um, so verse 17, the just shall live by faith. It's not the just shall be saved by faith and then they shall get back to works. It's they shall live by faith. Our whole lives are lived by faith. And this phrase in verse 17, from faith to faith, it's, from my understanding, it's an all-encompassing um, faith. It's not just from when we're saved, but it, it goes from the initial faith all the way through to the end um, of our lives or the rapture or, and, you know, even beyond. Um, faith is incorruptible. It's, it's gold, um, described as gold that is... Even though gold perishes, faith is 
is, will never perish. It's incorruptible. And that faith is Jesus Christ. Um, so, yeah, the faith, faith is it's everything to us from when we are saved and beyond. It's not just our initial, initial salvation. Hebrews 10.38 Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you might point to diligently seek him and say, well, that's some work you better get, get to. But... It's all based on faith. You can't work without, you can't work alone and expect something. It's all by faith. So believing that he is, is by faith. And believing that he gives us, that he reveals himself to us when we seek him is also by faith. Otherwise he won't reveal himself because you don't have faith that he will actually reveal himself to you. Um, it's all by faith and we can't leave faith behind. Galatians 3, 1 to 29. So yeah, I'm going to, this is, you know, all of Galatians 3. But it's, it really points to, even though a lot of people want to say Galatians only refers to people trying to get saved by works of the law, it actually is talking about uh, those who are saved by faith and then go back to works. It's very clear that that's what it's talking about. Uh, and this is the whole point of my video. So I will be going through Galatians 3 and then a little bit of 4 um, and then that'll be it. So, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye, ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So he's like, you've already received the Spirit, and how did that happen? Did you receive it by works of the law, or did you receive it by faith, by hearing the gospel? Um, are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? See, they've already begun in the Spirit, they are saved. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? So they're going back to the law, back to works to try and um, perfect themselves, perfect the flesh, which cannot be perfected. Um, have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? Oh, if it be yet in vain. Uh, he therefore that ministereth to you by uh, the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So, you know, God is working miracles among them after they're saved. Um, and he's like, is that because you went back to the law and started putting God in your debt? And then he's like, oh, okay, I guess I've got to do a miracle for you here. Um, or was it by faith? No, the Spirit works by faith. And it's by grace because it comes from God. Everything is of Him and, and to Him and through Him. Or of Him, through Him, to Him. Um, so clearly they, they were saved by the Spirit, by faith. But then they thought, okay, better go back to the law. Um, and they, were, they didn't understand that the spirit working in them um, was only by faith. It wasn't by works of the law. Even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So any blessing is by faith. 
And as I said before, Abraham received that blessing through faith, not um, not by helping God out. I mean, we saw what happened with Hagar. He was trying to help God out. He, he re reverted back to works. He started out in faith, and then he reverted to works to try and help God out and, and produce what God had promised. And that got him nowhere. I mean, it, it got him in a bad place, and um, uh, Hagar's um, son Ishmael became a problem for him and a problem for Israel. So you don't want to go back to works after starting out in faith. Um, where was I up to? Verse 10, I think. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it, it is evident the just shall live by faith. So what are we doing when we're going back to the law? We're going back to a cur the curse. And when we try and keep the law, keep commandments, we're putting... Um, we're, we're, we're not going to be able to do it. We're going to fail. And if we don't keep everything, we're putting ourselves back under the curse of the law. And um, why, if no man can be justified by the law, should we then live by the law after we're saved? No, we should live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed, redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, that it be but a man's covenant, Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Uh, so God made this promise of um, to Abraham, um, which he believed by faith. And when the law came later on, that law, the law could not um, override uh, the covenant made um, between God and Jesus about. Um, what Jesus would accomplish on the cross to save us all and that it would be through faith. So the purpose of the law, well, we're going to get there, but the purpose of the law was has nothing to do with um, God being able to give those saved by faith um, a better life. You know, it, that was not its purpose. Its purpose was to make sin exceedingly sinful and to, um, you know, diagnose our need for Christ. But that's coming in later verses. Um, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be a man's covenant. Oh, I've read that. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And we are baptized into Christ, and that is how we enter that. Um, uh, that's how we are involved in this um, covenant. We haven't made any agreements. We are just baptized into Christ. He's the one that made the promise, um, made the covenant with God. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God, before of God in Christ, the law which which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of God none effect. So they're unrelated. The, the covenant with Israel, the first, um, the Old Testament, you know, Old Covenant, whatever it's called, um, you know, the law of Moses, that was not, um, that could not disannul faith and that we are saved by faith. 
For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So promise can only come through faith, not through law keeping. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. There it is. It was added because of transgressions to make sin exceedingly sinful till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law which would have which could have given life, uh, verily righteousness should have been by the law. So the law cannot bring righteousness. No one can keep it. And so we can't add anything to ourselves by trying to keep it after we're saved. And I'm not just talking about the 613, I'm talking the, the Ten Commandments um, and any other commandments um, that you read in the Synoptic Gospels and uh, the Epistles, um, trying to keep them of yourself and not um, by faith, it's uh, impossible and it does not bring, it does not add anything to you that will please God um, and it shows a lack of faith. You're not exercising your faith. Um, where, where was I up to? Okay, so, yeah, if there was righteousness that could be obtained through the law, it would have been, but it's not. So it isn't. <laughs> but the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The promise by the faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So I believe that Jesus Christ works in my life and that is me exercising faith and that is how he works through faith. Verse 23, But before faith came, we were kept under law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So the law only condemns us. It only, it was only a schoolmaster to say, "Hey, look at you! You're you're evil. You've you can't keep the law. Um, there's nothing good in you. The more you try to keep it, the worse you are. Um, you've got a problem. You need Jesus Christ." And the only way he saves is by faith. By faith, uh, sorry, by grace through faith. Um, by believing the gospel. So the law is, is a schoolmaster. It's not a method that God uses um, to work in your life and to give you um, the promise and to, to bless you. Is just a schoolmaster and it's work finished when we believed the gospel. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has been, as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Therefore is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we are heirs. And that means everything that is was promised to Jesus Christ from God, um, we are also heir of. Everything he is heir of, we are heir of. And that came through faith in him. It's nothing that we did to put God in our debt. He gave it to us through faith, by grace through faith. And Galatians 4, 1 to 11, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, un were, were in bondage under the elements of the world. 
Uh, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman under the law, made under, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are, ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are not gods. But now, after ye have known God, or rather unknown of God, how ye turn again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. So, you know, we, we were under bondage, as it says in, in verse 3. We were in bondage under the, under the elements of the world. And then we were made sons, adopted as sons when we believed by faith. Um, and we had the spirit of the son of sonship sent into us so that we could cry, Abba, Father. And we're no longer um, servants, but sons and heirs. Everything we receive now is by grace through faith. Um, but why, when we have that, are so many turning back to the weak and beggarly elements, desiring again to be put under bondage, which is the law or commandments or you know any any do's and don'ts. We can't go back to the weak and beggarly elements. We can't go back to bondage because we were set free. And uh, so, yeah, our whole lives need to be from faith to faith believing that everything we receive, everything we need is by faith in God and it comes from him and there's nothing we can do to put God in our debt and to, for him to um, need to recompense us for anything. He, he arranged that everything would be of him, um, through him and to him so that... Um, Nothing can be, you know, we can't boast. It's, it's nothing to do with us. It's all him. It's to his glory, for his glory. And we will praise him for eternity because of it. So live by faith. Don't go back to bondage. Go, don't go back to the law. We're not perfected by works of the law, by works keeping commandments, by do's and don'ts. We're perfected by faith. And we need to find new ways every day to exercise that faith and continue to grow in faith. And it's being tried by fire and it's imperishable and it will be found to the praise and honour and glory of Jesus Christ um, when we see him face to face. So live by faith. I hope that blesses you. Bye.